Hey guys, this is Kim Hartz, and today I want to show you um, an image from a recent session I did uh, with an adorable little Labradoodle. She's three months old. Her name is Nellie. Uh, but I wanted to show you how I uh, would retouch an image of a dog that's black and white um, straight out of camera because sometimes getting those blacks and whites to have details can be difficult. I know that can be a big struggle um, getting it correct in camera. So I wanted to kind of show you if you maybe have a little bit, um, you know, maybe not as much detail, how to kind of bring some of that back and to work towards a finished image. So um, this is one of my favorites from the session. Uh, she is so, so cute. But this is straight out of camera. So you can see that right here where my mouse is, I have detail, but I could use a little bit more. And then over here, I'm losing a little bit of the black and I also don't have a catch light in this eye. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my little basic things. So overall, I think the exposure is pretty good um, because I do have really nice detail here. I'm loving how I'm getting the texture on her little head. Um, so I'm gonna just pull back my highlights over here. You see just a little bit, not too, too much, but see how that kind of brought that back? show you again so if I take it back to where it was and then bring it you can see how it just kind of comes out just a little bit more okay, so let's get in there so we want to see detail here so we see great detail here a little more here and so let's go up closer to here so and you want to make sure too. one of the things that I always like to make sure is that the whole face is in focus so from the tip of the nose to the eyes and all of this fur um, it depends on how you like to shoot. Uh, since I shoot in studio, I really want to capture kind of everything. Um, you know, I've, I've, I'm definitely a little bit blurry back here, but my main focus right here is right, right in this area. And I've gotten really nice focus in there. And I do see just a hint of a catch light, which is great because now I know where to put it back in. So also if you've got, you know, this part, I do see detail, but maybe not as much as I'd like. So you can always pull your blacks, sorry, back the other way a little see how it's coming back a little bit so let's pull back and see see let's look at the difference real quick so kind of here's let me zero it out here's where it was and then if I just pull them back just a you know a little not too much it just comes back in a little bit. And so too, you wanna to make sure when you're photographing that you are photographing in raw because that gives you a lot more flexibility to adjust your images later without damaging them. Because if you're editing on a JPEG, every time you edit it and then save it, it kind of downgrades the file. So if you're doing this, uh, for a client that maybe wants a wall portrait or something that's gonna go large, you definitely don't want to be editing um, on JPEGs if possible. So there's another little few little things you can do. So let's say I wanna maybe bring in that fur even a little bit more so I can use my little brush and I wanna put like a little bit of a, a lower exposure. I'm gonna go start with negative 10 and I'm just gonna kinda of brush in there. And you don't wanna to do too much because you don't want it to look like you really brushed anything in there. And so I'll show you. So you can see that point right there, you can adjust this. So look if I, uh, way too much obviously. So you can kind of play around with this. So I might just kind of go right in there because it doesn't look like we did anything, but it's still bringing that detail back. So I'm gonna click on a new, a new brush and I might just wanna bring this up a little bit. So I'm just gonna add a little bit over here. And so I'm gonna go the other way and just see, just a little bit more. And keep in mind too, you don't want this side of the face to look like the exact same exposure as this side of the face. You want to have a little dimension, especially since you can see my lights coming from this way. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to zoom in. It's coming from this side. So I still want this side to have a little more fall off, which you can see in the way the light hits the fur and the way the texture goes. So I would also do my crop. This is how I cropped in camera. Um, I love negative space, so I play with that a lot. Um, and I'm just gonna show you how I would continue to crop, bring it up kind of probably right in there. I'm gonna see if I like, and I'll show you. So I'm, if you notice here, I'm gonna bring it up a little bit because little details you need to focus on because they can really draw your eye away. So I love this chair and I love the curve, but so you can see the bottom of the, um, or the, the top of where the leg meets the, the upholstery and I don't wanna see that. So I'm just gonna bring it in a little bit, kind of right in there. And I really like that. So I love, like I said, I love all this space over here. 
So now I'm going to show you some tips too on what I do in Lightroom before I get to Photoshop. So I've done just kind of basic things. I'm going to clean up this uh, little chair in a little bit in Lightroom, add a, a catch light and all that good stuff. But I have a little preset that I've made, which includes a little vignette and a little bit of clarity, which kind of pumps up um, a little bit of the texture in here and that's about it so i i put that on all of my pet uh images it just kind of gives it a little pop but if i want to make them stand out even more i go and use this gradient tool i love the gradient tool because um you see a lot of people add vignettes but the vignettes are so obviously a vignette that it's kind of overdone so the gradient uh filter actually allows you to create a vignette without it looking like the standard vignette that just goes around the edges so what i do is i'll just pull it from the side and you can go over here to the exposure. I like to bring it down because I want it to kind of darken that up. And I pull from everywhere. Um, and it's okay that I'm going into the fur a little bit because I'm trying to get that just a little, see? And I see how cool that is. And it allows you, like I said, to create your own vignette. And I'll do the top a little bit too. I need to pull it back a little. And then I might still do more in Photoshop, but this just kind of gives me a lot more flexibility in what my vignette looks like. So look at the difference. I mean, that is so, so cool. So let's see if I can go back to see what it looked like before. Yeah. Okay, awesome. <clears throat> so I really love how that's looking. And you can see where all my points are. So from here, what I would do is I would now take it into Photoshop. So let's do that. Let's go photo, edit in Adobe Photoshop. So it's gonna take us over there real quick. Okay, so here we go. Here is our image. So first what I'm gonna do is I am going to clean up uh, the upholstered chair. So I'm gonna create a new layer because if I make a mistake, I want to make sure that I can fix it later. And I'm going to use um, the spot healing brush. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and I want to make sure it says sample all layers. Um, okay, I'm going to come in here and it's just a few little things. So this is really easy to just kind of, and I'm just going to quickly just kind of show you if I just see a little spot or a little piece of fur, I just quickly clean it up. Um, and to be honest, so when I have little stuff like this, you know, a lot of times you've got pets that, you know, shed on everything. Um, I will send it out to a retouch artist to do just these little things that are really tedious that don't really add to my um, final edits. Um, but if I have time and I want to go in and do it, I'll do it myself. Uh, but it does save a lot of time depending on how hectic your life is. Like I have two little kids, so I would rather spend time playing with them and do my final edits, which take me no time at all, um, than sitting here and retouching all this fur. But um, so now, okay, I did a few basic things on the couch. There's not a lot to touch up there. So let's now go in to look at that eye. So I'm gonna get kind of close in there. And so we can kind of see where the catch light was. And so you might actually wanna clean some of this off of the eye. So I would most likely use the clone stamp tool because I'm gonna make it look like the same color as the eye. And again, I'm gonna sample all layers. I'm on 80%. Um, and you press option, click where you want to copy, and just, I might actually go even higher than 80 just to hurry this up a little bit. So you're gonna click where you wanna copy, and I'm just gonna kind of brush out some of that fur that's getting in the way of where my catch light needs to go. Okay, so, and you just kinda gave that doggy's eye a little trim. So we wanna see the beautiful eye, right? So. Okay, so now, oh, that looks awful, right? Because you always wanna have light in your eyes. So I'm gonna continue using the, um, the clone stamp tool and I'm gonna make my brush a little bigger because look how big that, um, that is over there. So it's a little too big, so this catch light. Okay, perfect, that looks good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hover over this. Again, I'm gonna press option and then I'm gonna click. And so now when I come over here, there it is. But I don't want the opacity to be at 100 because if it's the exact same um, 
I'm gonna go 75 actually. If it's the exact same um, strength, it doesn't look right because again, remember the light's coming from this side. So we wanna make sure that um, it looks the same. So I'm gonna come, it doesn't, I'm sorry, not that it looks the same, but that it looks natural and that it doesn't look identical. So it goes, I think right about in there, I'm click. Let's see, okay, see how it's a little less. Perfect, and I'm gonna come out and look. Looks pretty good. Let's see, what do y'all think? Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And so um, what we're gonna do now is a few of my favorite final edits. So now that I've gotten that, if everything is all good with this and you're like, okay, great, this looks perfect, I'm now gonna go to my final edits, what I'm gonna do is um, you can merge the layers and you do Command, Option, Shift, and E. Oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> that creates a layer with everything that you've done, all the edits in there, which you can also do. So I'm gonna keep that and just work off of that. So um, now I'm gonna go to my favorite actions, which are down here, and I'm gonna start with, um, actually I'm gonna flatten this, so that's in the actions, so I'm working off this one thing, and I'm gonna do high pass contrast first. And I love this because it brings out the texture, but I always, it's on 30%, I always turn it to about 15, just a little bit less just to show you the difference. So without and with, it just adds a little bit of just extra pop. And I'm going to flatten that. And then my next favorite, here it is, paint with light. So I love this because it allows you to paint on your image and really make the edits that you want. So you need to go get a paintbrush over here. I like to make it pretty big depending on where I'm working. I'm gonna work on that little white spot again because again, I don't want it to be um, too hot and it looks a little hot in here. So I'm gonna darken this and I'm on 20% opacity. I do not want it to look like I've really done anything. So, and I might tone down the little booty and the tail a little bit because your eye is drawn to the brightest thing in your images. And a lot of times that's a person's skin. Um, but in that case, there's a little hot spot on the little tail back there. Uh, so I just toned that down just a hair, you see? See the difference? And then um, one of my favorite things to do is then to get a really big brush. That's pretty big. And I go in and I continue to work on my vignette just even more. Like I, I like really dark, moody images. So um, being able to do that. And I'll even go on the dog a little bit. Um, yeah, I really like that. So look at the difference I'm coming in there. So then I'm gonna lighten just, and I do this every once in a while, get a bigger brush, let's see, even bigger. Let's see right in here. And I just do like a little pop of light right there. And it's just very small, but it's just kind of to draw your face in to the dog's face. Now I'm gonna flatten that. And then I love this vignette. This is one of my favorite vignettes. And I just kind of draw it where I want it to go. So I really just want it right there. And that's a little too much. So I'm going to tone it down a little more. Look at the difference. So it makes a big difference, I think. It just having them pop out a little more. I might even tone it down just a hair a little more. Because we've already done a lot of vignetting, so I don't want to go too crazy. Okay. <clears throat> now I think that looks really, really nice. So I'm gonna flatten it. And that is pretty much what I would show to my client. So now I'm gonna save it and it's gonna take it back into Lightroom as a saved um, edit. And so don't forget to, um, if you're going to share on social media, don't forget to put your logo in there as well. Um, I always recommend uh, waiting until your client sees the images, which ones they pick, and then retouch those and share those on social media just to save yourself some time. Um, but I do wanna show you really quick um, how I would um, put your file or your logo on your images because uh, photographers' images get stolen all the time. So I like to put my images pretty much right in there, sometimes even on the dog, it just depends, but in a place that's not super easy to retouch out. So like if you put it way over here, somebody could just crop that image right there. So I go right in here and that works pretty well. People can still crop it out or do whatever they want, you know, if, if they really want to. I've had somebody actually Photoshop my logo out, which is pretty funny. Um, so you can always put it kind of on the dog as well. But I don't think there's anything wrong with putting it on there because you wanna make sure that your work is recognized as your work. So just make sure it's in a place where you can't easily um, 
where you where somebody can't easily remove it. So, but that's kind of you know briefly how I would go into uh, working on an image that's uh, of a black and white dog, uh, especially if it's just a white dog and you have fur that you have to deal with that might be slightly blown out. Um, we really want to bring that back. So be sure to shoot in raw. Um, understanding how to photograph a dog with black and white fur is also <laughs> very important. Um, and that's something we can cover moving on to. But uh, I hope this image um, has been helpful in showing you kind of my basic edits of how I deal with uh, a dog like this in post-production. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And I hope you learned a lot. Thanks for tuning in.